And then uh, SPS Viceland dropped a piece on Oz Rap where they took shots at like a bunch of local legends. Um, did you see that piece? And if so, like, what did you think of it when you first saw it? When I first watched it, I just laughed and just thought, oh, that's just, that's just stupid. Um, and then saw people, you know, on social media, everyone starting to have a bit of an opinion about it. But then the final story behind it is that those cult shot, or I think their name are, they're not even against Lazy Grey. They were just edited in a way just saying, well, we're just doing our own thing. We don't want to do that thing. So like in the house said, they're actually supportive. Well, he knows the bloke, so he's, he's met them, whatever. And they're supportive of what the other people do. But it was edited in a way that made Lazy look like a fuckwit. Mm -hmm. And because everyone loves Lazy, you're not allowed to diss Lazy. Like none, none of us are going to stand for it because he's like the god to all of us. So that's what came. And then the dude who actually did the interview, he rang Lazy a couple of times to apologise. He actually got Lazy's number and realised he'd fucked up and tried to make amends. I don't know how it all ended, but yeah, there's a the story. Now in that piece, they also mentioned the um the Chopper Reed track and said something like "No more songs from Chopper Reed" or something like that. Um, is that the track that you had some involvement with? The the whole Chopper thing started. Jazlik, who owned o, Obese or OBs before Peg's Hammer. Uh, so Shazlik's brother, Jesse, he was at school in Swinburne. Some people had come to the school and said, we're doing this movie, it's called Trojan Warrior. We've got Stan, the, the kickboxer, we've got Chopper, this and that. Do you know anyone that does music? We want to do a song for it. It was one of the then and Jesse's like, yeah, my brother runs a record label, go and see these blokes. So they came in and just said, you know, buy a strut, do you want to do this thing? And we're like, oh, it sounds a bit corny, it's a bit weird. Don't know how people are going to accept it. We'll just do it, why not? You don't look back and go, I could have done a track with Chopper and I didn't. Mm. So yeah, we went and so we did two tracks for it. There's another one called Ajax, which is on Just Me and Brad. Um, yeah, we did that track, went to the premiere, whatever. And then the second version of it, Bob Balance had a verse for it. And he got put on up, which went on to the obesity compilation. So for the original track, we were at Trem's place, I think it was Elstonwick or St Kilda. Chopper and Stan and half of the TV crew with them rocked up. There's about 10 dudes in this tiny little flat, a little bigger than this, but not much more. And um, yeah, and Chopper just had his bit of paper I'd written for him with the raps. We did a, Brad wrote a verse and I wrote a verse and he picked that he'd do the one that I did and he just read it off the paper. Then I said, can you do a bit faster? Can you do a bit slower? And um, then me and Trem, I think we sat for about five or six hours just chopping Chopper's verse to sound like he rapped one verse. It was pretty painful. We got there in the end. And after that was then Jesse goes, I'm going to do a whole album of Chopper tracks. And that's when that Chopper album came. And then, you know, you got Ken Oath, you got Matty B on there and everyone. And even that, I got, I was paid to write some of the raps for it, but I didn't appear on it. Oh, so you're basically ghostwriting. Yeah, I was just for the, the Chopper thing. I was like, oh, because I was Shaz's brother and loved Shaz and loved Jesse. So, you know, oh, I'll do it for you, but I just don't want to have my voice because there's already a bit of kickback from dudes going, what'd you do that for? That was whack. Mm. Oh, well. And then so from meeting Chopper, like what do you remember from his character and like was his character the same in person as it was from the movies? Well, to me, he was like Eric Banner. Like when I, like Eric Banner played his part so well, the way he does the voice and mm. all that. But because he came to the studio with all these other people, it was like we didn't really get to hang out with him or talk to him or have a convo. I had the moments where I'm like, oh, can you do this and we'll do it this way and trying to read him through some of it. But it wasn't like we could actually hang out. But then I saw him in, uh, when I lived in Clifton Hill and he was going in The Chemist. And I was like, hey, Ch Chopper, how you going? He's like, yeah, he's sort of writing me off. And I mean, we did that song together. Oh, boy, I suppose. I remember my name and shit. And then it was on, it was on Channel 31 doing some interviews. He goes, yeah, I was, you know, Brad Strutton, Boris B, the Scallywags. And I was like, oh, you mentioned me again. That was all right. <laughs> Blake with a pretty bad memory, he did all right. But it was a good experience. The film clip was a bit whack. And, you know, people were like, oh, it's got a necro chorus. And why are you... Yeah, you know, miming the words to American shit. So everyone's just got to look on it now on YouTube. People are still going, oh, what's this whack shit? Like it's like 15, 20 years ago, man. Get over it, you know, move on. So no regrets? Nah, not at all. They're just a good memory, you know, and, and whether, he's, whether he's a good or a bad person or whether all these stories are true or not, you know, he's sort of the legend and mm. it's just, you know, I grew up hearing about him in the papers and how terrifying this bloke was. So it was quite cool. Stan the man was there, so we weren't going to get hurt, you know, if anything was going to happen, we're up. I think he said the strut once, yeah, oh, fuck, stop looking at my ears, some shit like that. I don't know, I don't know if he's looking at him, but that was about it when he was putting the headphones on. Apart from that, he was real respectful and nice. I think he was a bit intimidated, you know, so many people and him having to be the, the guy on the mic in front of everyone. <laughs>
the, 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 the last one.